Hello, hello. It's the Oxford Downtown Diaries. It's a dynamic duo, really, is, it is. what it is. Of course. Uh, I'm Kelly Westbrook, Kimberly Smith. Yeah. This is our first official show. We're so excited. I am excited. I'm excited about our show today because, one, we can tell about all the amazing things that we're doing downtown, but then the second part is interviewing one of my favorite people. <laughs> I guess he can be your favorite, too. Uh, he's all right. Uh, Joe Medor, <laughs> our village manager for downtown Oxford, and just understanding what exactly he does. And they have a lot of upcoming projects, too. They do very stimulating things. But we talked about this in our little teaser, but I think one of the things I'm most excited about is just sharing what we do, right? So people, you know, not only us, of course, but Joe, we have Joe here today and any other guests that we have, like really understanding what it is we do on a daily basis and what they do on a daily basis and how we're helping other people. Yeah, agreed. Because we do so much within our little office and team of one and a half. (laughs) And I mean, we do have fun doing it, but I don't think people really understand um, probably the depth of what we do and all the different parts of the community that we really do touch. Absolutely. We do try and have a lot of fun because if we don't, we'll cry. We'd go crazy. (laughs) For sure. We'd go crazy. (laughs) But we get along well, so I think it's easy. Um, But yeah, this was a rough week. This was a hectic week. A lot. This was a lot. So we started with a board meeting on Monday night. Luckily, we have a nice board. So that went fine. Great board. Well, we had we did have one of the um, committee meetings Monday afternoon. And then we had the board meeting. And then Tuesday. State of the community with the chamber, which was great. It was wonderful. Joe spoke and Jack Curtis and myself (laughs) and then Commissioner Spiz, which was wonderful. And It was nice that uh, the chamber does put that together for the community. Yeah, it was really cool to hear. That's another place that it's really nice to hear and see what other people are doing within the community. So we got to hear what's happening in the village, which you guys will get to hear in a minute, what's happening in the township, what's happening at Oakland County level. And then we had some special recognition to people who are like really making a difference within the community. So that was nice, too. Yeah, that was good. And then last night we took it um, after hours to Oakland County Thrive that was able to honor the DDA programs in Oxford and Lake Orion for the Stronger Together platform, which yeah. definitely is probably one of our favorite things. Yeah, it was really nice. It was I, I don't usually go to those kind of things typically, or if I do, I'm there in a support capacity. And so it was really lovely last night. Thank you for including me the way that you did. And it was a great event, actually. I was impressed. They yeah. had a lot of vendors, which we were kind of marketing for our summer market, trying to solicit some new vendors. I didn't know that we were going to do that, <laughs> though, when we got there. They had these awesome vendors and a lot of food vendors, which we're always oh looking gosh. for more food yeah. vendors. And good food. And <laughs> it was so funny because we walked up to the first table and I'm like, are you in a brick and mortar? Where are you from? And <laughs> I knew by look- <laughs> I knew by looking at Kimberly, she knew where I was going. I was going into full sales, sales mode. mode. <laughs> But it was good. I mean, they, it was cookies, and they were really good cookies. It was good, and yeah. so we would love to have them at our market. Yeah, yeah. Um, Speaking of there. markets, right? <laughs> yes. You're almost full with vendors, yes. correct? So that was one of the things that I worked on this week is um, getting all of the agreements out to the vendors, making sure we have enough vendors, getting the documentation, and also for our concert series, making sure all of the documentation is buttoned up for all of our performers. And then we were also working on our other activities, um, getting that just with sponsorships and logistics and promotions for our Tuesday line dancing, our Tuesday cornhole league, our wind down Wednesday, Wednesday car shows. Like we have all of these activities that are going to start rolling out over the next couple months. Um, So we did a lot of that this week. Yeah. And I'm so excited because to activate each day, Our goal is really to bring people downtown Mm -hmm. so that they can go into the businesses and that our businesses can be successful. So when we put these events together, I think that people think that we're just trying to have something for the community, which is a goal of ours. But at the same time, it it really is to bring people into the businesses downtown. Yeah. Um, I'm very excited about the line dancing. I'm not going to lie. I know. I'm not. I'm pretty excited about that and the Wind Down Wednesday. Yes. Wind Down Wednesdays in the new courtyard space, which... Um, We went with Excel this morning to lay out all of the hanging lights that are going to be over um, that little alleyway. So that was good. I 
Yeah. I know yeah. we kind of had a divide and conquer this morning. Yes. Yes, we did. Yeah. So it's going to be a really fun uh, summer. And yeah, to your point, we want to bring people downtown and have an experience, have a day, not just pop in for line dancing and then go home. We want them to come down, have dinner, do some dancing. Well, it is in social drinks. district. It so. is. All, all of those activities are. So yeah. that makes it really exciting and kind of adds a new sparkle. Agreed. And if people don't know what social district is, you know, you can take a glass. Well, it has to be a plastic cup <laughs> um, with the social district logo, but you can take it out and enjoy your drink of choice on the street downtown. Can't cross M24. So don't let us catch you doing that. Yeah. But um, it is really nice to be able to have a drink and to walk and to move into some of the different businesses and things like that. Yeah. And just to clarify, in case you aren't familiar, you have to purchase the beverage from a reputable establishment that holds a liquor license. I love that. Reputable. (laughs) Then you can take that item, you get the cup at that establishment, and then you can take that cup out of that business into other establishments, but not other liquor selling establishments. And that's something that we implemented two and a half years ago, Mm -hmm. and the village was a big help on that. So... I worked a lot with Joe Medor and Village Council approved that because that was a long process um, to put in place. And I think that was right before you it stepped was. into this role. Yeah. And then last summer we expanded it. That's right. To include the park for the summer concerts. So that was really exciting yes. to get that. And everybody has been very good and yes, following the rules. Very responsible. So. So let's talk about the rules because I feel like we try to break them and our friend Joe Medor tries to, (laughs) I think that's a perfect segue because Joe really tries to keep us on track. So we want to welcome Joe Medor, our village manager. Hi, Joe. Hi, how are you? Hi, Joe. Good. Good. Poor Joe. So Joe deals with us on a daily (laughs) basis because our offices are in the village offices. Right down the hall. Yep. Yep. You guys and the Chamber of Commerce. It's good to have everybody in one spot. Yeah, it is. It actually makes the collaboration so much better, I feel, because really more than an email or a phone call, you know, when we want something, we just come (laughs) and knock on your door. Or if you're walking down the hall to go get coffee or a snack. Hey, Joe. Sometimes I walk around the other way so I don't go by your open door. Oh, I see how it is. (laughs) Joe, come on now. Yeah, what? Come on. (laughs) <laughs> All right. So, Joe, you've been in this position how long? Uh, it was six years, December. Okay. So Congratulations. Years, so. Yeah, thanks. Time Milestone. Flies. When ah, you're having fun. Yep, exactly. Yep. It was uh, quite a change, you know, uh, coming here. And so much had been gone through by the community here in the village in 2017. And there was quite a, a uproar. And so it was good to bring things in and calm them down and get us on a good track. And then I brought Terry, our clerk and treasurer, in. He's many years experience as well. The following year in 2018. And uh, so it's been good, good smooth sailing. It's been quiet. We have a really great council now. We have some, you know, turnover the last couple of years, but we have a good council. So all that we do and what we can do to help with you guys is all in part because of their support. Okay, so True. Yeah, agreed. We are so grateful for everything that you guys have done for us and your, just your willingness to work with us even when we come up with these crazy ideas, which we do come up with sometimes. Yeah, and, like I've described before, sometimes, you know, I have to be the dad in the room sometimes and uh, make sure the rules are being followed, but uh, that's okay. If you're not pushing the rules, you're not you know, pushing the boundaries, you know, you're not trying hard. True. And I'm you, so glad you yeah. feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> but you're the voice of reason sometimes right. as well, which is nice. It gets us back in track of what we're trying to accomplish as a team. Right. What is the favorite part of your job? What do you look most forward to? Just solving problems. Helping people because a lot of times people, they don't run across the government or permits or state rules that often. When they do, they don't know where to start. They don't know what the process is. And sometimes we can just say, hey, hold on, let's work with you and help you and figure this out. Um, Some people, and I think at the local level like this, is where that is most efficient. Uh, You can ask most people in our neighborhood who their state rep is or their state senator is, and I would set, I would bet half don't even know. It's just they don't have that connection. They they don't see them at the grocery store, the gas station, or church. Um, So being local, we uh, allow that to. Hold on, I'm supposed to turn my phone off. Joe, you're breaking the rules. See, but this is how busy he is because (laughs) his phone rings all day long. I mean, and he's taking the time out to spend with us. So thank you, Joe. Yeah, you're welcome. Yep. Did you need to get that? No. Okay. (laughs) 
<laughs> you no, know, not I nearly do... as important as this. Oh, oh, okay. That's nice. <laughs> I do think, though, that you're right about, you know, the local level. And sometimes we don't think about that. But there are people that come and meet with you on a daily basis or they're asking your team for help, whether it's Kim in building permits or they're coming up to Vicky with water bills or they're coming to you because, you know, they have a neighbor problem and they want to build a fence and, you know, you're trying to be that voice of reason. So you have to juggle a lot of different things in your job. That's one thing I would say I do like about it is anywhere from someone calling about having a problem with their trash pickup to, you know, a, a tree, a branch that's fallen and, and our DPW needs to take care of or all the way up to major budget questions and planning for the millions of dollars and the millions of dollars the state is going to make us spend doing um, upgrading our water system which then, of course, will affect most of our local streets mm-hmm. needing to be repaved as well. So, again, all the way from the big expensive things down to the, I mean, I was, I was changing the clock in a battery in a council chamber a day or two ago. So, <laughs> uh, top to bottom. Boots on the ground. Right. That's right. <laughs> what has been the biggest problem that you've had to deal with in Oxford? I guess just kind of bringing the, the, the village organizational-wise and budget-wise. When I first came here, one of the things they asked is redo our budget system and our budget format in a way that they can understand it, where it's clear. Because, again, our council are basically volunteers. Um, we're asked them to learn this, oversee this, learn the budget, oversee uh, ordinances, all by coming to the village meetings once a month. And we pay them just about enough to buy lunch each month <laughs> for one day. So um, it's a lot to ask for, but they're basically – volunteers well and they're really looking to you to yeah. make those suggestions to them right. and you know i think the same thing with our board is they're really trusting us to dig into it day to day and then when they look at it you know to have guidelines mm-hmm. and to be able to show them okay this is the good side of this this is the bad side of this now you make the decision but to be able to present all of those things i mean that's a big job. Yeah, and, and I'd say that's one of the one of my strong suits is being able to take something like that and lay it out in a way and explain it to them in a way that they can grasp pretty easy mm-hmm. without making it overcomplicated. Um, I was told you know, some of the budget processes before were just so uh, in the weeds. They had a hard time really following it and uh, being able to make their decisions. So we've paid off many bonds since I've been here over year after year. We have another one or two coming off in a few years that just frees up more money for our water system and other things like our parking lot. So it's been good. Oh, the parking lot. Let's talk about the parking lot. So the parking <laughs> lot, um, <clears throat> I get stuck in every day with a heel. So, oh, yes. but it's I was be. so impressed at the last village council meeting because you found a way to save hundreds of thousands of dollars on this new parking lot project. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Okay. So probably in 2019, we started talking about it. What do we want to do with it? There was even a conversation about removing the old fire hall police garage out back we got some prices on that and how many spaces would be gained by removing that but it's it's a valuable commodity we use it the chamber uses it the dba uses it oxford open-handed uses it the poly and trail um, manager uses it for all their equipment and stuff so it's really best to leave it alone and that's the plan now but um we thought it's going to be so much money we'd probably have to spend it or break it down over three phases, over three different years. We were going to try to do one portion one year and another the following and the following phase on year three. Well, when you do that, it, it makes the cost go up. Mm-hmm. That those communities or the, the contractors have to show up with all their equipment, everything mobilized in, and sometimes that's five, six, ten thousand dollars $10,000 for them to show up with all their equipment and move it here and then to do the thing over and again the next year and the next year. And by making it one project, helped in that sense, but also makes it a larger project. So now you have a little more interest from some of the larger companies, perhaps, that might not have bid on a small portion. And then you take into account, which I didn't even take into, it didn't, it's hard to put the number on it, but we know what you pave this year is going to cost more next year. And then when this, you pave next year, it's going to cost more the following year. So not even taking into account the increased cost over the next couple of years, uh, we were looking at saving like $250,000 by doing it all one year. That's huge. Yeah, and then the, the bids came in really good this year, um, so we're very excited. Um, as I've told people, I'm, I'm tired of having the worst lot in town, and so come Memorial Day, we hope to be done. We're almost done, and so we'll have a nice lot. It'll be function better. It'll be easier for people to walk on, easier to maintain in the wintertime because when you have all these divots and potholes, stuff, the water pools, then it freezes more, 
it just makes it tough for people to walk. See, but you say that we've had the worst lot in town, but I feel like this is like being a parent, right? You always give to your kids first, <laughs> yep. right? And you always make sure that they're yeah. good, and yep. then you can focus on yourself. So I feel like that yeah. was a good decision, right? We fixed the other parking lots in town. Yeah, you fixed fixed the streets last year. Yeah. Uh, Park Street is coming up. Is that right? Yep, this year right, the bids will be due uh, next Friday. We're taking the bids for the water main, okay, from mechanic all the way to Pontiac. Um, so two blocks, uh, water main, we're going to fix a bunch of sewer connections in the meantime before that starts, and then a new surface because you're tearing up the road to put the new water main in, um, the road surface is going to be redone as well. So that's quite an improvement. So real quick before we move on, when is um, the parking lot project kicking off? We don't have a definite date okay. yet. We're going to meet April 1st okay. with the contractors and nail down some scheduling. Okay. But we anticipate about the middle of April. Okay. So and then middle of April till substantially complete is uh, our date for Memorial Day or the week after Memorial Day, oh. that Friday after Memorial Day. Is, if it's not completely done, then it'll be some minor things, Pretty maybe close. some landscaping, some striping or something okay. like that. But we need to know when we have to wear flat shoes to get across right. the street, street yeah. into our office. So come we'll have come to nice park. hot weather when you're wearing those flats. Uh -huh. open, they should be fine. <laughs> we should be good by then. Right now it's still boot weather out there, right? That's Are we going right. to have the trolley? drive us to work no not the <laughs> not the like tenth of the a mile in the shuttle from yeah. across yeah, the, right yeah. we'll be parking across the north side in the can we get a lot. people mover for all of the people that need to come visit the village just saying yes no. a couple just segues no. maybe <laughs> yeah well i'm just thinking from a communication standpoint we want to make sure people know you know not to come in through back right they'll need to come right that'll be front. barricaded off yeah. that's one of the things we'll be discussing with the contractors okay signage yep lots closed other entrance so. um but there'll be most of that we're going to try to leave maybe six or eight spots oh, open okay because we have a lot of people coming in for permits right that's oh, right. a big part of it people come in and pay their water bills yeah so we don't want to have uh six eight spots open then it's all taken up by employees so we're right. going to park across the street and hopefully those six or eight spots are enough throughout the day people can come and go and yeah you know there'll be some flexibility with the contractor because some of the work they're doing is underground drainage and installation where it won't really affect the surface along the building much so yeah. that might be good for a week or two where yeah. you can put 10 cars there Gotcha. But for the most part, it's going to be closed, and we want to get it nailed down and done because, again, we had to take into account there's three elections this year, and mm -hmm. Clerk Wright from the township uses our community room as a precinct. Yes. And so we didn't want to mess that up because now you have the 30 days early voting with the drop box. Mm -hmm. So even though the August 6th is the primary next, so come the 1st of July, we need everything back need in order so the done. drop yeah. box can be in place and people aren't confused or have trouble getting to it. So we're trying to, and I think we found a good spot to fit that window. Perfect. So I think that for me raises an interesting topic that we can talk about today for both the village and the DDA is communication. Mm -hmm. Communication to community members. How do you feel like that works? Do you feel like there's opportunity for improvement? You know, we get feedback from community members on both sides mm -hmm. that they feel like for us, DDA, we're doing a good job communicating, and then we have some people that feel like we're not communicating enough. How do you feel like the village is doing when it comes to communications? Well, I'm not a big social media person at all. <laughs> um, so for one, I think we have our website, which has your basic information on there, forms and other information. But again, you can call our office. You can email me. People stop in on the fly. Um, we have a great staff up front. Vicki's so friendly at the front desk. Mm -hmm. We're there, we're accessible. Some people just want to be able to, I guess, find it on their fingertips at a given moment on a Saturday night at 10 o'clock, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think the social media, from my perspective, from us, is to inform, not a mm -hmm. two way back and forth street necessarily, but let them know when we're going to do some hydrant flushing. Because mm -hmm. in the hydrant flushing notice, we talked about your water pressure could be a little bit lower in that section of town and things like that. So, again, we know probably half the town is not social media. Yeah. So we'll put it in the paper as well. Okay. I think we. In certain spots, we have new door hangers or some things like that. I was going to ask, because you, you've done mailings before, right? Yeah. For certain, mm -hmm. um, certain events or yeah. activities, just to like, communicate with yeah, the Yeah, like the parking lot project. Our parking lot swings around to the south, comes out on Hudson Street. Well, I know, and you've seen it too, yep. 8, 10, 12 cars are parked there every evening mm -hmm. when we leave from the uh, employees at the downtown uh, businesses in that southwest quad. So I sent letters out to everybody on that block. Apparently, it wasn't as clear as it could have been because some people thought we were paving their lot, and <laughs> nope. you know, they might have been happy, but I then they're also really up. I heard that from some business owners, <laughs> so I'm not going to lie. Yeah, Angie Surprise. was telling me that yep. today yep. out, out here earlier. Um, so I was just trying to let, give them all a heads up. Say, look, during this time frame, you're going to want to find a spot to park up in the northwest lot, perhaps.
perhaps where we will be parking, mm -hmm. there's less pressure on that parking lot. It's still pretty full during the day. Like right now, it's still pretty full. Yeah, but there's, there's still a some, lot out there's there. There's opening spaces there currently, though. Um, the so nice yeah. thing is, is that once the village parking lot is done, I think more people will be apt to park there yeah. and then walk across. So I think that is good. From a communication standpoint, I know you handled the social and Kelsey Cook, village president, also handles the social media. So I think that's mm -hmm. great. And, you know, you're right. You are informing people. I think we take a bigger role on social media, but that's more of a choice. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we all know social media is good and bad. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it's hard to manage. Yeah. And we try when we know something's happening within your mm -hmm purview we try and communicate that as much yeah. as possible as well and but the, and the chamber shares it sometimes yeah. on their yes yep. as well so um so. for instance uh, we were just sending terry was sent sending something off to the paper today about uh put an ad in for our beach help for the summer help um so we'll put something on our website we'll put something on our social media about that too we what have, kind of help are you guys yeah. looking for so each summer we we hire uh, five or six um usually high school students sometimes college students to go to the beach uh, the beach is open at noon uh, they're there till 8 p.m. Sometimes four-hour shifts, sometimes eight, depending on the, the person or the, the, the young adult. Um, they basically watch, just overwash the beach, keep things clean. The, the, the goose droppings are a big problem. So each morning they get there early. First thing we want them to do is clean up the beach because the geese is their, their constant problem. Check the bathrooms for trash. Check them like once an hour to be sure everything's okay inside the so bathroom. So they're not lifeguards. So they're, they're more like they're, beach, beach attendants. Beach attendants. Got it. Okay. Yep. Yep, Do they so. have um, responsibilities in the park as well, or just the beach? Just in the park, in the sense of if they see trash out there. Okay, so they're kind of across yeah. the entire park and yeah. beach. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and so if they're in, if anyone's interested, where would they go to apply for that? Um, it'll be posted on our site probably the first of next week. Okay. And how to reach us? Uh, and I'll probably put something the first of the week on our social media as well. That's okay. a good summer job. I feel like I you can get a tan. I mean, I the like, goose stuff, I'm like, oh, not so much. But, I mean. <laughs> yeah. Those darn geese. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, then they're protected. You can't just go out there and start can't kick taking them. them out. You can't kick the goose. Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, sometimes it's college kids. This one, uh, there's one young lady that's coming back for her fourth year, and I think now. And oh, some of them, great. again, they're in college, and it's a, it, it could be a real boring job. Okay, you're mm -hmm. working, sitting on your tan, but mm -hmm. after a while, you get tired of staring at the water or yeah. kids playing or whatever. Some of them, Don was telling me, bring their laptops and they'll sit there and oh, do okay. their work, do, do their, their school, school work, right. perhaps, you know. That's a that's great, great idea. summer yeah. classes. Once, yeah. once, once an hour, we want them to get up, go in the bathroom, check them out, make sure they're clean, towels are good, pee-pee's good, you know, things like that. But there's a lot of spare time there as well. Again, they're not there to be lifeguards. Yeah. They're there just kind of watch. Yeah. People, I'm sure, have questions, you know, well, you know, about the playground or whatever. The beach doesn't have a lifeguard, correct? Correct. Okay. So, and that might be something interesting. I'm just thinking of interesting things to share with people yeah. that maybe they don't know currently. Yeah. Like that that particular beach does not have a lifeguard. So you are on your own yeah. from a safety standpoint. Mm -hmm. So let's yep. talk about something that's way more fun than <laughs> beach attendance. <laughs> what is more fun than beach? Marijuana money. Oh. The green. <laughs> he knew I was going to ask him. Sure. He knew it. I, I warned him. Nope. I just, I just want to know... You know, the government just came out and said that, you know, you guys are getting a certain amount. Yeah. What are you going to do with it? So as the aforementioned project on the parking lot, which all um, we have about 700,000 into it with engineering, designing, and all the uh, construction work, um, we got a, just under 240,000. Okay. Marijuana retail oh, okay. money. So that there will cover about half of our parking lot. Um, we also have in our budget, we move... Um, about $100,000 over to our local road funds each year. A few years ago, the uh, council raised a million, half a mil, and that brings in about 70000 a year extra. So that 70000 is put over to local streets for the street work. It's still not enough. Um, okay. For like the Park Street project, we're going to spend like two hundred and some thousand dollars just out of the local general fund, let alone the three or $400,000 out of the water fund for the water work and the street work. So that $240,000 is great. It's 240000 more than zero. Yep. So that's awesome. But it's still a drop in the bucket. The number of water mains and the streets that go along with them that we have to do on our capital improvement plan over the next 10 or 12 years is in the millions of dollars. Okay. So, so each year you have a certain amount budgeted out? Yeah. Okay. In our capital improvement plan, we, we looked at it years ago. We don't have the streets picked out, but we know all the streets where the water mains are. And Got it. roughly what it's going to take to pave the street and do the water main. And it's, uh, it was.
was like four to six million dollars or somewhere in there. You're gonna have to talk into streets or water, millions of dollars. And wow. the state's making us do it. Okay. E- even if the water main is fine and functioning. I feel like uh, if they're making you do it, they should give you the money yeah. to do it. Or at least a large a portion. A lot of people right? thought that. A lot of people thought that. As a matter of fact, Oakland County, um, a couple of cities in Oakland County, like Livonia might have been one. And our very own Kelsey Cook represented the Water Resource Commission in a lawsuit for the state a few years ago, making that same point. It's an unfunded mandate. Well, the courts came back and they said, no, the state is correct. Um, they don't have to do it because you aren't mandated to provide water. Okay. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Oh, I didn't read it all, but that's, that's kind of super you know, interesting. It's like, you know, if, they're, if the state's not making us provide water, they can't say that we're, they're making us replace it because they're not. So I doubt anyone's about to close our water plant and get everyone yeah. well anytime right. soon. So. Yeah, we are doing that. And again, the fact that we have our own water plant is great. Um, we're in control of if a big system goes down somewhere you're yes. tied into. You're that is to, that you know, happened a couple of years ago, yeah, didn't it? I don't, it's, I don't know. I don't remember. Oh. Not for us. I mean, ours no. didn't. I well, know, no, but, ours I mean, didn't. Yes. But wasn't there an issue with, oh, maybe it was contaminated water in the surrounding communities, but it didn't affect. Yeah. Uh, and that's one thing that's yeah. come up a couple of years ago. Um, the PFAS thing is very important. People, uh, you hear stories about it. I watched something recently, just a couple of nights ago, about the farmers out in Brighton with the PFAS. Because a lot of these waste uh, water treatment plants will take the sludge. And then the state of Michigan for the last 30 years has said, you can take the sludge and you can apply it to your farm fields. And mm. it's free. And it saves a farmer $30,000 a year. And you get all the nutrients. And now they come to find out that wastewater treatment plant was taken in PFAS. So now the sludge has PFAS. So now they went and spread it on all these farm fields around the state of Michigan. For those that don't know, what is PFAS? It's a what they call a, a forever chemical. It's a chemical oh. used in Teflon and waterproofing yeah. clothes and things like that. Where it Not doesn't, something it doesn't, you want to swallow or eat. Right, right. Or right. have it, it yeah, break food. down. Yeah. yeah. So we have a zero detect um, testing on our wells. We have the three production wells right here at our um, plant. And there's no PFAS detection at all in our uh, water stream. So we're very lucky. Happy. Yeah, that's great to know. Yeah. I mean, how scary for some people that are not within, yeah. you know, the village limits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to switch it up. Okay. What do you do in your free time, Joe? Tell, ah. us, tell us about yourself. Um, I love this question. I like to golf. There you go. We know I, this because yep. he never comes to concerts in the yes. park because golf is on <laughs> golf Thursdays week. and we need to change this mm-hmm. somehow. Right, right. You scheduled it on my golf night. I, I can't help that. Oh, okay. That must be it. So, yeah, I leave here Thursday and golf. Um. So yeah, I do that. I love the snowmobile. This year, did none. Right, mm. the winter that wasn't. Wah, wah. Yeah, they're right? just. I usually. I hear we're not getting enough. snow tomorrow. Yeah. That's true. This is what I call nuisance snow. Yes, yes. that's right? true. You can't do anything with it. Yeah, <laughs> I no get good. that. It's no good for anything. Um, but yeah, so I love to do that. My uh, my wife and I we camp, and we kayak. Um, a few years ago, we went out to Colorado and Wyoming and did some fly fishing out there. We had a good time. Nice. So, get and away from it. I you know, even though you work in the public arena, I I like to be private when I'm gone. You like to get away from the people. Yeah. So are you from this area originally? Uh, Davison, which isn't okay. far from here, right? Yeah. My, my son, that's what, it was really weird. My son was in the bowling team at Davison in middle school, and we would come down here and bowl at Caldier Lane. And so every time I'd come down here, we didn't come down this very area much, right? Because yeah. if I was going south, I'd dip on 75, sure. Clarkson, and head to the Tigers game or Red Wings game. And you so would I just up, pass us. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, you know. Um, so we were at Collier's Lane a few times over the years, and I kept coming through Oscar. I thought, man, what a cool little town. You know, they got the movie theater and all the stuff. Who would have like, thought you'd be working here? I know. And, like, it was so <laughs> weird because, like, two years later, I'm like, I'm going to work there. Yeah. Kind of and you never looked back. No. That's no, right. I didn't. And I didn't fly for anybody else. I just flied here. That's oh, awesome. It worked out well. I was just going to say that. <laughs> that is yeah. so great. Yeah, because, and, you know, a friend of mine was teasing me when I got here. He's, oh, you're going to be one of those city managers like gypsies. They move all around. Oh, you know, it does happen. A lot of them move mm-hmm. from a smaller village to a bigger town or a bigger city, and they work their way up the, the yeah. chain, so to speak. But I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm here. You're That's happy. awesome. Yeah. That's well, awesome. anything else you want to share with our audience? No, no, I think you guys do a great job. I think Aww. we're very lucky to have you guys. The Thank energy you. you guys bring. Yeah. All, like I said, when I say you guys get to talk about the fun stuff at the community breakfast and stuff, that's true. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You make it fun, right? We but, do. And make I'm, it fun. I'm fully aware of that. Um, the projects and all the stuff you have to do and everything, but um, that that's that's a very important part of what happens in our community. And yeah. like I said, I'm, I'll make sure the people's water works, the sewer flows, and and the garbage picked up. And we need that too. And that's important yeah. too. Yeah, that is very but, important. Um, but yeah, what you guys do is awesome. I well, think we're so. a great team mm-hmm. with the village oh, and the yeah. DBA. I yep. feel sure. like 
honestly, I told, I think it was my mom that I told a couple of days ago, because I'm coming up to my three years tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I said, I feel like I now come in and I work with my family. Mm-hmm. And when you get to that point, you know that everything is just going right mm-hmm. and you have a great team that you work with. Same with our office with Kim and Vicki and Terry. Oh, yeah. Four Agreed. of us, we all get together and we all work good together and fantastic yeah. it's a great so, it's a great team so yeah. awesome well thank you thanks, well, thanks for being for on yeah well thanks, my pleasure Joe. Well, i'm looking forward to it one of these days i'll probably get on and watch and see how it goes when at somebody else is down here no 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 oh no at this at your podcast no oh. our podcast <laughs> <laughs> i'm thinking about the summer i'm at i'm, at, I'm still at the beach she's already I, line I'm, dancing I'm let's line be dancing. honest i'm at the beach i have gone and come on clicked onto your website or your facebook maybe and saw the couple clips of the concert yeah. Watch some of the They're films. very exciting. Oh, yes. And let me tell you, this year, year yeah. we have oh. all tribute bands. Mm-hmm. And oh, my gosh. It's going to be amazing. You might even have to skip one week of golf. That's how good they're going to be. Yeah. Very exciting. So let's talk real quick about some of the things that are coming up before we wrap here yes. today. So probably the most important are on our next show, we'll talk about the public spaces that we're going to be opening up this spring and summer. Okay. Our events. And then... Do you want to announce who's going to be on our next show? Our next show is um, Angie, right? Yes. Angie from Evergreens. And we are so excited because she has gone from a local business to now distributing her um, bros and doughs. Yes. Is that what it's called? Yes. It used to be the former Bagel Bomb is now bros and doughs. And she is distributing that in 33 states, I think you said. 33 states, which is incredible. So I'm excited to hear about her journey and everything with that. So That'll be our next time we're on. Yeah. So very exciting. But we're doing, are we still doing letterboxing next month? We are. Okay. <laughs> Much to my dismay, we're doing letterboxing. So that'll kick off on April 1st. And then we, so more information to come on that since I see you don't want to talk yep, about I it. I don't. I don't. Um, she knows me well. And we have our spring cleanup on, I believe it's April 21st. April 21st. Yes. And okay. we'll start at noon so that it's after church. Mm-hmm. It's a and Sunday. Yep. And for that one, it's too early to plant. My mom always taught me that you can't plant flowers until after Mother's Day. That was her rule. Got it. So we are going to do, you know, uh, trash collection, getting the flower beds ready. We'll probably do some paint and staining. The trolley needs stain so bad. Yeah. So if you have any skill set, even if you don't, we'll put you to work. Like, let's be honest. Yeah. So it's 12 to 4. Yes. I think we have. 12 to 4. Email the DDA or post on our Facebook page if you're interested in participating that day. We'll also have a second event in May. We're still confirming the date yes. on that one, which is where we will plant the flowers. Um, and then as we move into, I think that's all that we have right now. There's been some discussion about a potential kind of event more run by the businesses in May. For Mother's Day. For Mother's yes. Day yes. with some, some fun activities, but more will come on that as we get closer. Yep. Just and then, watch our Facebook page for that yeah. one. And then as we get into June, that's when we'll kick off our summer summer I'm so nights. Excited. Our Oxford summer mm-hmm. nights with all the things we talked about today. So we have a lot coming up. I know. It's gonna Very be busy. Fun. Very fun and exciting. So anything else you want to share before we leave? Nope. Just thanks for coming to our first show. Oh, we did it! Yeah. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.